The Armour All Summer Grill, your off-season fix of V8 supercars news and views with Grant Rowley and Cameron McComber. Welcome to the Armour All Summer Grill, speedcafe.com's end of season videos, wrapping up the highlights of the 2011 V8 Supercars Championship. I'm joined by Cameron McConville. Cam, thanks for joining us. Pleasure, mate. There's no better way to kick off the Armour All Summer Grill than to speak about the champion and to speak with the champion, Jamie Winkup. He did it again, three titles in four years. He didn't do it in the most convincing fashion in Sydney, but Cam, it's hard to uh, really criticise him. Oh yeah, look, he did what he had to do, and I think by his own admission, uh, he said it was the softest he's ever raced, so massive amount of pressure, but the guy that was the most consistent over the whole championship put it together. Uh, Lounsey was coming hard, I would have liked to have seen one more round, but uh, he still did it and he did what he had to do. Speedcafe.com, Stefan Bartholomew spoke with Jamie Winkup in an exclusive one-on-one -on -one in Sydney. Jamie, you really set the pace for most of the year, but there's so many variables in this championship now with tyres and formats and Frenchmen and all the rest of it that it always seems to come down to the last round. It, it, it does. Obviously, um, the category engineers it that way with the point system, with uh, not a huge amount of points awarding for a, for a win. Um, and of course, it's competitive, you know. We're all, uh, I know my team uh, build cars for about six or seven of the guys out there, so um, everyone's got good cars now, um, and it's, a, it's always a tough battle, and it's so hard to lead this championship as well. Whenever you get a good lead, it seems to be cut down. Was it a different vibe to the championship race this year with uh, battling your teammate Craig Lowndes? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's, uh, you, you've summed it up perfectly. The, the vibe and the feeling and the emotion um, was twice as different to what it was when we're battling a, a James Courtney or a Garth Tander or a Will Davison from another team. You know, Generally we're working together like we do all year and it's a similar thing, but um, I just wish that uh, both of us could have the number one because we, we're uh, Lowndes is just as much a part of this result as what I am. Um, but that's the way it goes and um, we've won the team's championship. Lowndes had an awesome weekend and uh, won two, we couldn't ask for much more. There are a lot of clever people in your team, but the way that Mark Dutton seems to coach you through the races looks to be very important. Um, uh, I'm very lucky to have Dutto on my side. He's, uh, he's one of the, the best engineers out there. I, he's, uh, he's had 50 um, victories, 50 wins in the category. I don't know of any other engineer that's, uh, that's won so, uh, as many as that. Um, and, you know, it's, yeah, you're right. I, I said to him with seven left cigars, so mate, get me home, get me home. I'm, I'm struggling, and, uh, and he did that. Bathurst seemed to be a big blow for you this year. How important was it to bounce back straight away? Bathurst was disappointing. I, um, I really focused on that event um, from the start of the year, and uh, I felt like we prepared well, and I thought we were in the box seat as well with 35 laps to go, and a $2 part let us down with, uh, with the clip. So um, that, was, that was really disheartening. It was quite hard to, to bounce back, but um, dug deep, and we, uh, we bounced back massively on, uh, on home soil on the Gold Coast, and. Um, you know, I, I thank Lounsey, I thank the team, but you know, the, the, I've got to really thank Andrew Thompson and Sebastian Bourdais, they did a phenomenal job. Is winning that race in October as the lead driver in the car going to be a key motivator next year? Ah, uh, for sure, for sure, yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've done, I'm lucky enough to have three Bathurst wins, three trophies at home, but um, uh, all, all with Craig, which were unbelievably good wins, and I felt like I was a part of all of them, but um, never crossed the line. To, uh, to win the great race, so um, I'd love to be able to do that one day. And I guess the 2012 title, we're going to see the same old contenders come and try to knock you off again? I think so, yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, we're going to see uh, uh, Jonathan Webb's team, we're going to see them step up, you know, we're going to see uh, uh, Paul Dumbrell's team, they're going to have a brand new car next year and be competitive depending on who, uh, who drives the car. And of course, as you say, we've got all the usuals, HRT, FPR, Kelly guys will be there from time to time. I think Bridey will still uh, throw in his huge speed with, uh, with the soft tyre. Um, but, you know, from looking at the end of the year, I think FPR have uh, really stepped up. And if, uh, if we're not careful, they're going uh, to gonna catch us. So we need, to, uh, we need to get some processes in place to make sure that we can uh, push away again. That was Jamie Winkup. Cam, is there much more that Jamie can achieve in V8 Supercars? Oh yeah, look, I think there is. Uh, I mean, by his own admission, he hasn't won Bathurst in the car. I mean, that's one we'd all just like to win Bathurst for a start. But you know, to go over and take on NASCAR, which is which is rumoured and being talked about, you know, I think that's a big ask. I don't know if anyone can replicate what Marcus Ambrose has done, so he can still stay here and be you know the most successful Australian motor racing driver, and that's definitely achievable.
One thing for sure is that Jamie Winkup will be racing in the V8 Supercars Championship next year with Team Vodafone, his last year on his current contract. What he does beyond there, we'll wait and find out. One other thing for sure though is the Armour All Summer Grill is here all over summer on speedcafe.com and we'll have more tomorrow.